I'm in Malta. I'm here thanks to Construct 3D, and I'm working with Stargate Studios Malta to scan this, the Siege Bell. The Siege Bell was a gift from Queen Elizabeth back in 1992. It commemorated the 50th anniversary of Malta receiving the George Cross. During World War II, Malta was the most heavily bombed land in the conflict. It was a British colony at the time. Axis forces came in with planes and bombed the land. Plus, boats created a blockade to try to starve the inhabitants of Malta. More than 7,000 soldiers and civilians lost their lives during the conflict. But Malta did not fall. And to thank the island of Malta for that, King George gave the George Cross in 1942, one of the highest non-military honors that can be gifted. So in 1992, Queen Elizabeth, to commemorate the 50th anniversary, gave the siege bell to the country of Malta. Why am I here? Well, as you can see, the siege bell behind me and the tomb of the unknown soldier both are experiencing wear. Remember, these were installed in 1992, and let's be honest, that was quite a long time ago. So I am here with Stargate Studios Malta to scan the structure using multiple technologies so that we can get a current state digitally that we can then create a model for 3D printing. To scan something this large, multiple technologies need to be used. First, let's talk about this. This is a LiDAR unit. This unit uses lasers at millimeter precision, pointed out and reflecting off parts of the monument. It reads that data and creates a point cloud. In order to accurately use this device with this monument, we are going to reposition this in 18 different spots to get as much data as possible. Now, we're repositioning this and you might Think to yourself, how do you put together all of that data? Well, thank goodness for software. The software recognizes certain similar point cloud pieces of data and is able to accurately recreate a point cloud from multiple LiDAR scans. Now look behind me, that's the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. LiDAR cannot be used to scan that. Instead, we're gonna use photogrammetry. We just talked about LiDAR, which uses lasers, but lasers can't scan everything here. That's when we're going to use photogrammetry. And not just with one camera, two different types. First, we're going to use a drone to capture angles that we wouldn't otherwise be able to get. We're not gonna be able to stand 50 feet out into the ocean to take pictures of this wonderful monument. That's why we're using a drone. We can also use like a DSLR to capture high detail large images from different angles to put together the 3D model of things such as the unknown soldier back here because we didn't use a LiDAR to scan that. Photogrammetry also offers us an incredible way to augment the LiDAR scans. LiDAR can't reach into every recess. You can try, but you're not gonna be able to do it. That's where these photos and the footage from the drone come in to add detail and depth to the LiDAR scan. And all of those techniques come together to create a massively wonderful, highly detailed 3D model. What are we gonna use to 3D print this massively detailed, wonderful model? I'll show you. The Construct One XL. A beast of a machine. 320 on X, 380 on Y, and 400 on Z or Z. There is a 0.6 millimeter CHT volcano nozzle that is connected to an E3D copper heat block. That is connected to an E3D Hamera extruder via a titanium heat break. That all wires back to a Duet 3D board, which also powers the seven inch touchscreen up front. The build plate is PEI, powder coated and textured on one side and a sticker on the other, giving you a smoother experience. There is sustainability in mind when building this machine. The bamboo on each side provides rigidity, but also cancels 96 to 98% of the vibrations produced inside, therefore not transferring it below the machine to whatever it's sitting on, giving you a quieter experience. Plus, the parts inside are locally sourced as much as possible where it's built in the UK. The Duet 3D allows this machine to run RepRap firmware, and in that, it can do input shaping. That's gonna give you a much better experience when printing at high speeds. There is auto calibration, meaning that the gantry itself can calibrate 
the bed so that you get an even printing experience across it. Plus, standard mesh leveling does apply. When we talk about numbers that this machine uses, we get kind of crazy because accelerations are 17,000 millimeters per second. With that CHT Volcano nozzle up front, you're looking at a volumetric flow of 40 millimeters cubed per second. And as you can see, I'm at Stargate Studios Malta. And when we talk about a production company and what they're going to need, they're gonna need things fast. Time is money. So with the Construct 1XL, we not only get a large build volume, but we get it at a high rate of speed, meaning we're going to have high quality parts that are large, really fast. And that's exactly what we need because of the amount of data we need to process. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I'm here with my friend Andre, and he is going to hopefully take us through and show us how to process the monumental amount of data from the LiDAR, from the DSLR camera, and the drone footage, right? Yes, um, so as you know, we have a lot of scans, multiple scans, so I need to combine them into one model and bring all the photos so that we can create the textures um, and also reveal all those hidden areas that the LiDAR didn't catch. Should I show you? I'd love to see it. So the blue dots are all the scans that we took. Uh, each, each dot represents a position of the LiDAR scanner. You've got the bell tower over there, the monument. Here we can see the, the representation of those scans into a point cloud. So all those scans combined. That's a lot of data. It is. Each point is a, is a measurement of the laser. Exactly. So you can see the blue dots now turned into these black holes. So obviously the LiDAR scanner cannot scan underneath it. Oh, so yeah. that's where the tripod was. If we zoom in, we can see a lot of tiny dots. Super, super tiny dots. And those are not all of the dots. That's a small representation of, the, of all the dots <laughs> that's created. Okay, so we've got these white things. And those yeah. are all the photos that were taken with the drone, as you can see up here. Oh, I see he, that you can kind of see the drone yes. path it took on its photo path. These big circles around the whole uh, area and then zooming in onto the bell tower. One oh. photo okay, over there. Okay, there's that view. Exactly. And then if I click on the next one, you can see another photo. Then if we had to also get close down here, you can also see all the individual ones. These were taken with this DSLR. So mm -hmm. you could have seen Peter here moving one place to the other. And, taking, and following the same style of taking, acquisition, exactly. right? Exactly. If you had to play this, it will look like a stop motion video oh. playing one after the other. This is really cool because it's showing the different data acquisition methods all kind of gelling together. Yeah. I find that fascinating because what's, what's great is someone can do this. You know, someone with a, an iPhone or a DSLR at home or a drone exactly. at home, they can, they can do similar styles of acquisition. Yes. But I think with photogrammetry, it still offers the ability to do decent data acquisition. Definitely. So the, the advantage of the LiDAR scanner is that you make sure that because photos, the lens distorts the photos a little bit, you might get slight inaccuracies. For example, the bell tower might end up being slightly shorter or taller oh. than it actually is in real life. So LiDAR is giving you a one-to-one -one with a physical object. Exactly. And then the photos themselves to aid the LiDAR is almost like a texture pack exactly. that you're adding on. This area, as we've seen before, this was only captured by the drone. So we can see the detail that the drone created, which is good, but it's never as sharp. As it's, well, and it's not perfect. Exactly. But it's good. So now this, this, though, this had a drone, banana. That the is, LiDAR scanner. That is nice. Yes. You can see the individual stones. So the point cloud was turned into a model, a mesh, a 3D model. So this is, this mean, by a mesh, you mean you're connecting the points the point cloud into tr you're turning into triangles. Exactly. So each three points get turned into mm -hmm. a triangle. So basically, we triangulate all of the point cloud. And how many polygons? So it turned into one billion polygons, nine hundred something million, close <laughs> to one billion. The model that we're seeing on screen right now is thirty-three million polygons. We decimated it from one billion polygons to around thirty-three million so that we can now print it or put it into other software. So then this, the inscription, so this was hit with the LiDAR. Yes. And then the photogrammetry, the footage that was acquired is what gave it the ability to have this exactly. representation you can, of... You can see yeah. all the texture of the stone. That's um, so cool. So now, from here, printing it out on the 1XL is just, is just exporting an STL exactly. and going, right? Exactly.
And this is it. This is the model of the Siege Bell, the unknown soldier atop the bastions printed on the Construct 1XL right behind me. This is an amazing piece of history represented by a 3D printed model. I love this so, so much. So this was printed at just under 40 cubic millimeters per second. It's 0.32 millimeter layer height in Prusa Mint. It's just shy of three kilograms of material. And this whole thing, all of the pieces, just slightly less than 34 hours total print time. Now this is a model made from raw photogrammetry and LiDAR data. This presents some issues for 3D printing because it didn't experience a cleanup pass. We wanted to get this done as fast as possible before I left the island and so we skipped a 3D print cleanup process. Now this gives us a very unique opportunity. Construct 3D along with Stargate Studios Malta are releasing the models, all of them for this, completely free, completely free for you to remix, download, print yourself, fix, augment, change, have all sorts of fun with. You can get them at printables at the link in the description. One of the things this LiDAR and photogrammetry scan is great for is virtual productions. And Stargate Studios has some really cool stuff made in Unreal Engine. You're gonna get to see that real soon. And actually you can check out an episode all about this over on the Stargate Studios Malta YouTube channel that will be linked down below. I can't believe I'm in Malta. I had a wonderful time and thanks to Construct 3D for bringing me out. And in fact, thanks to Stargate Studios Malta for being my camera crew and production team while I was on island. I couldn't have done it without either wonderful company. Listen, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the things. And as always, hi.